Hey everybody, this is your girl, Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife. That's right, I'm satisfied. And today, I want to talk to the husbands. And there's a reason why I want to talk to the husbands, because I, I receive a lot of letters where husbands are sometimes, just sometimes maybe a little confused about their position as husband and some who love God want to be kind uh, to their wives and uh, do right by God in their household. And sometimes balancing that can be a little um, tough, a little challenging, a little confusing. So today I'm going to clear up some confusion for a lot of husbands out there. I want to start off by telling you a story. Um, a while back, uh, uh, a guy I knew asked me a question. He said, Toy, I need your help. I know you talk about relationships and marriage and everything, but I need your help on this thing. He said, I was, uh, I have a friend who I really liked. Before I met her, she was with a guy who was very abusive, mean, didn't do much for her. And so when she met me, I was like a breath of fresh air to her. And she had just broke up with this guy who was harsh, who was mean to her. And she came to me and we started talking. We became really great friends. And I really took it, took a liking to her. I'm like, man, this girl is, you know, could be my potential boo, my potential wife. He thought in his head, right? Now, this girl at the time was moving into a new house, right? And he, you know, was happy for her and everything. And he helped her move into the house. And he was excited about doing that because he really liked the girl. So he wanted to prove that he liked her. So he moved all her stuff into his house. I mean, into her house and help her, you know, get situated and everything. And she was looking out at her backyard and she was like, man, my yard is a mess. Man, I would love to have a nice backyard. Now, this guy that I'm talking about was in construction. He was a builder and he was like, well, I can help you out with that. So excited to do it. Why? Because he really liked the girl. So then he decided, well, let me help her out and really show off. So he built her a huge deck on the back of her new house. And then he did all types of expensive landscaping in her backyard. And any of you know this, my husband is a builder and I've come to know how expensive building materials can be. I also know how costly it could be to, um, uh, to landscape a backyard or even a front yard. So this guy really liking this girl built her a deck and landscaped her whole backyard. Oh my goodness. She was excited. She was happy for this new landscape backyard for this new deck that he had built her. Right. Shortly after that, he was really devastated and hurt because this beautiful young girl that he had built a deck for helped her move into her house, landscaped her whole backyard, went back to the guy who she was once complaining about the one that was abusive, the one that was mean, the one that was harsh. And he said, Toy, I don't understand this. I don't understand this. I do all of this for this girl. And here I am a good guy. And he was, he's a good guy, handsome guy, you know, had his own business. Um, and, and did a lot of great things, was very successful, had money. You know, he had all the things that most women would want. And he said, and here I am a good guy. It seems as if Women want the hard, tough guy. They want the guy who's going to beat them and be hard to them and do this. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's actually a lie. That is not the truth. We do not want a hard neck guy who's going to punch us in the face, kick us, abuse us, and call us out our name. That is not what we want. He said, well, I don't understand. I did all of this for this girl. And she still went back to this no good guy who beat on her, who called her out her name and who messed around on her. How could this be, Toy? 
I said, are you ready for the truth? He said, yeah. I said, well, buckle down. I said, are you sure? Because it's going to seem harsh what I'm going to say to you, but it's the truth. And I was taught that the truth will set you free. And he said, okay, I can take it. I said, okay, well, let me tell you this. First of all, really great women who desire a husband, they're not looking for a guy who beat and abused them. Just the same, we are not looking for a guy who can we can run over either. We're looking for that guy who knows how to balance the middle, who knows how to love us, have compassion for us, take care of us, protect us. But at the same time, we don't want that guy who's going to allow us to abuse him, use him and dog him. And he's going to give us everything. And we don't have to do nothing. I said, where you went wrong is you did not qualify her before you built a deck, before you spent all your money landscaping. You didn't qualify her. He said, well, what do you mean? I said, well, let me ask you this question. Did she commit to being with you exclusively? Did you have a, a date on the, uh, on the calendar for y'all to get married one day? Did you, uh, figure out was she that interested in you? All of those answers were no. I said, well, you deserve exactly what you got because you did not qualify her for a deck off her backyard, off her house. You did not qualify her to land, spend all your money on landscaping. Let me tell you what women will do to you when you build a deck and spend all your money on landscaping and you didn't qualify us. <sighs> Unfortunately, the truth of the matter is many women will use you and suck you dry like the sucker we think you are. That's hard to say. I don't want to say it, but it's the truth. Women don't like suckers. We don't like men who we can run all over and you just going to keep doing stuff for us. And we, we can just talk to you anyway. We don't have to call you, but you just keep buying us stuff and buying us stuff. You look desperate and easy and we cannot trust you. Because if I can run over you, that means you can't protect me. I can't trust you. To, to protect my children. I don't want to have babies with you. Uh, sorry. You're not that attractive. We, <laughs> you, you're too easy. <laughs> that's just the truth of the matter. If many women would tell the truth about that, that's just the truth. And it's, it's not that you're not a nice guy. You are. It's not that you're not a successful guy. You are. It's not that you're not kind and compassionate. You are. But you are a sucker. And it's something about a sucker that women don't like. You know, um, a, a girlfriend of mine went to Africa. And she went to the safari, right? And she saw two giraffes sitting there. And the giraffe in the front... There was a giraffe in the front and a giraffe in the back. And the giraffe in the front was taking its hind leg and kicking the chest of the giraffe that was standing behind him. The interesting thing, the dummy in the back, the giraffe in the back was, was buckled down. And every time the giraffe in the front would hit the chest of the giraffe, he would horn down and ooh, 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 and he would just take it. And he would just take it. And she said to the, to the, um, to the guide, she said, why is that dumb giraffe standing behind that giraffe, the other giraffe, and allowing that giraffe to just hit him in the chest? And he said, oh, it's pretty simple. That's the female in the front. And that's the male in the back. That male wants to mate with the female giraffe. And the way a giraffe qualifies a male giraffe being fit to be a suitable potential father for her babies is she kicks him with her hind leg. And she is watching to see that when she kicks him, is his leg going to buckle? Or is he going to fall? Is he going to limp? 
Because if he does, she will deem him unsuitable, unfit to be her baby's daddy. Why? Because if you can't handle me, you can't handle these other male giraffes that could potentially kill our babies. A woman, when you are dating her, sir, and you can't handle me, <laughs> I can't trust you to protect me from your mama, to protect me from my family members, to protect me from strangers on the street. I can't trust you to protect our children when they're in a situation. Unfortunately, we look at a man like that as weak and we're afraid that you won't be able to protect us. So it's not that we want a hard neck guy. We want a man that is strong, that is going to lead, that's not going to let us take over him and use him and just talk to him anyway. And he still give us gifts. We won't respect you. That's just the truth of the matter. I had a person desiring coaching from me that called me and said, Toy, I have a problem. I've been married for a short amount of time. And in this short, this is less than 10 years. In this short amount of time, I have not been able to develop a friendship, a relationship with my daughter who I had prior to marriage. Because my wife refuses. My wife doesn't want me to have a relationship with my daughter. My wife doesn't treat her with respect. She doesn't like her. Uh, you know, she, she doesn't like my daughter. And so I have, I'm feeling bad because I can't have this relationship with my daughter because my wife won't let me. Now, I just want y'all to know, to every man that is listening to this, I want you to hear me and hear me clearly. I have a high level respect for men. I do. Very high respect. And, and I'm going to tell you a pet peeve of mine, especially a person who speaks um, and train wives uh, and equip wives on how to be a wife. I despise when a wife disrespects her husband. I hate it. I, I hate it to the core of my being. That's one of the things I cannot stand. I cannot. Um, God has called us to respect. Stop, eyes. God has called us to respect and honor all people. But I believe also God calls us as wives to a higher level to respect and reverence our husbands at a high level. And he always compares that to him. But I need you to know something, sir. You have a responsibility and I'm going to tread very, I'm trying to be careful. But the, the thing about the truth is this. It is very uncomfortable at times, but it must be spoken. You husband who are the head of your house, God put you in that position. He puts you as the head of the house. He says, husbands in Ephesians uh, 5, he says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. He compares you to Christ. I, this is very vital to this conversation because I want you to pay attention to Christ and everything that Christ does for the church, God requires you to do for your house. And sometimes the things that I'm about to say is not going to sound good. It's not going to sound right. But people try to make Jesus out of, oh, God is love. Oh, God is love. Yes, he is. But there's a firm chastising side of God where he don't play with none of us. None of us. And God is expecting the husband to lead his house in the same way. So I said to this husband, whose wife has forbidden him to have any relationship to his daughter. I said, this is your fault. Your fault, not your wife's, not the devil's. This is your fault. Do you know that the Bible says 
that, um, and he says, um, when a man does not take care of his children, you are worse than an unbeliever. Worse. Unbeliever is already bad, right? He said, you're worse than that. You allowed your wife to make you stop taking care of your daughter? No. Mm -mm. No. No. No, you cannot. As a matter of fact, I want to remind you of something when the Lord said um, to Adam in Genesis. He said to Adam, he said, and I want to take you to that scripture so you can see it for yourself so you don't think I'm playing. He says in uh, Genesis chapter 3, 17, he said to Adam, he said, because you listen to your wife, which means husbands, there's times you can't listen to your wife. So first thing I want to say to the husbands, never let the unrighteous advice from your wife Rule over God's word. Never. I'm going to say that again. Never let the unrighteous advice of your wife to rule over God's word. Never. This is the problem. The same thing that Adam did that many men are still doing today. God told Adam when Eve wasn't even around, don't touch the tree, dude. Don't touch it. When you do, you're going to die. But what did Adam do? Wife tasted, turns and give it to him. Here's the thing. It wasn't like Adam was down the street over in another city. No, the Bible says her husband who was standing right there. You sit right there with your wife in the same house. And you allow her to defy God and you say nothing. You do nothing. <laughs> God said three and Genesis three and 17 to Adam, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. And you did it anyway. There are husbands out there. You are agreeing with your wife and her unrighteous behavior to us. And to God, you look like a sucker. <clears throat> no, no, no. You don't want to look like a sucker. No, you don't. You want to honor and obey God with everything in you. Even to the point that if your wife said, if you don't do it, I'll leave. You should go and open the door and let her out. Because you should say to your wife, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I told this husband, I said, go to your wife and say to her, baby, I love you. I really do. I love you with all my heart. I pray that we, we grow old together and that we have everlasting love. But I need you to know. That with all the love I have in my heart for you, I cannot defy God for you. From this day forward, I am going to build a relationship with my daughter. I'm going to take care of my daughter because I was commanded by God to do so. And if she has a problem with that, you're going to have to tell her, I can't figure out how to care. You, you're too grown to care. You're too saved to care. See, when a man stands firm in God, oh, how attractive you are. Oh, how power to us, to a woman, a woman, when a man says, uh-uh, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. Oh, I'm going to do, oh, no, you're not. Not in here. We're not going to defy God. We're not going to defy God because of your attitude. We're not doing it. As for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. Now you can go on with that, but we are serving the Lord in this household. You have, you have people who are defying their parents 
because of their spouse. Listen, there, there are some mean parents out there that are, are, are trying to wreck marriages or whatever, and you have to put them at bay. But when it comes to taking care of your elderly parents and your spouse, your other spouse said, we ain't taking care of your mama. We ain't taking care of your daddy. If your mama and daddy is sick, God says to honor them in their elderly age by taking care of them. They took care of your raggedy tail. And even if they didn't do a great job, we are called to honor our parents. And we should not allow our spouses to dictate if we're going to do that or not. Because we're going to honor our parents because the Lord said so. I need every husband and wife to understand this. You must serve the Lord. Even your, your, your spouse does not override God ever, ever. They do not override God. But I need you to understand, husbands. You don't have to call her out her name, which you should never do that. You don't have to hit her, abuse her to get her to understand or respect the household. God did not call you to do that. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells the husband over in, let me, let me, let me take you there. First Peter chapter three and seven, he said, you husbands must be careful of your wives being thoughtful of their needs and honoring them as the weaker vessel. Remember that you and your wife are partners in receiving God's blessing. So you're no better than your wife. God's just put, God is a God of order. So in a household, God puts um, our positions in the right order because anything with two heads is a monster. So God made the husband the head of the wife, but we're all leaders. But in the household, the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. He says to the husbands, continuing in, in 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7, he says, remember that you and your wife are partners in receiving God's blessing. And if you don't treat her as you should, your prayers will not get they will not get ready answers. In other words, he said, your prayers won't be answered. So I'm not telling you in this, in, in, on this video to dishonor your wife and disrespect her. That's not what I'm telling you to do. What I'm telling you is to stand firm in your house and take the lead role and tell your wife that, listen, if it comes between your unrighteous advice and God's word, yours is going, yours get thrown out. God's word rules in our household. You could never, ever, 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 ever let your wife's unrighteous advice overrule God's word ever. Single men out there, I need you to understand. Single women, you know what they're looking for? Let me tell you what the new sexy is. The new sexy is a man who can lift up his hands and worship God. The new sexy is a man who reads God's word and know God's word, who respects God and honors God and make God's word the final authority. The new sexy is when a, a single man say to a woman, listen, I'm keeping myself to marriage and I'm not going to let you or anybody turn me away from God. That's the new sexy. If you want to be attractive to a woman, love God with all your heart, your mind and your soul. And don't let anything that she do to cause you to deter off your path to righteousness towards God. Don't let it happen. Secondly, be at peace with whatever decision your wife makes after you stand for God. Be at peace. Be at peace. God has called us to peace. Whatever decision your wife decides after you Stand on God's word. Be at peace with whatever decision she makes. If she decides to leave, be at peace. If she decides to withhold sex from you, be at peace. If she decides not to talk to you, be at peace. Whatever she decides to do, be at peace. Go into prayer. Then go into prayer and ask God, to send labors across your wife's path to plant seeds and water seeds that the eyes of her understanding be in light that she may come to know Christ as her Lord and Savior and live for it. Continue to pray for your wife. You might even have some, some men out there, your wives are so far off that you might even have to go in fasting in prayer. You might have to push a plate away for three days to get your wife out of 
the mindset that she's in. Because if she's against God, she's against you. I told my husband this. If I ever leave God, you should leave me. I'm no good. I'm no good without God. None of us are no good without God. We have the potential to tear. I have the potential to tear my husband's life up without God. My bad attitude, my unsubmissive ways, how foolish. Y'all know me now, but you don't know the old toy. You don't know her. You don't know Latoya. You just know toy. You don't know Latoya. We don't want to bring Latoya back because Latoya was disrespectful. Latoya talked back. Latoya was rude. Latoya didn't even, didn't, wasn't thinking about God's word. I was no good for my husband. Husbands, you got to be strong in your, in your, in your household. Don't ever allow your wife's unrighteous advice to rule over God's word. Thirdly, remember standing for God does not mean, and I already spoke on this, does not mean that you have to demean your wife. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. If you want to bring your wife to God, you want to draw her with God's love. God gave you the uh, ingredients uh, he gave you everything you need to know in order to how to draw us. We're so easy. All you need to do is love us. God knows that a woman, all she needs is love. And what is that? That's where the love languages come in. You got to know what your wife loves. Listen, I love chocolate covered strawberries. I love for my husband to say certain things to me. I love my husband to call throughout the day just to say, baby, I was thinking about you. It's just those little small, look, listen, we like the cornball stuff, don't we ladies? Say, men, we like the cornball stuff. We like the movie, The Notebook. You need to pay attention to that book. We like all of that, that goofy stuff. You want to draw your wife closer to God? Love her. Love looks over a multitude of sins. The Bible also says in Ephesians 5, it says, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church that he gave himself for it, that he removed every spot, and every wrinkle with the washing of the water through the word of God. You can, okay, so first of all, let me say this. Husbands, husbands, let me go. Let me let me go because I, let me go to that uh, so I can really guide you to that. That's, um, remember, uh, that is in Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 5. And I want to take you to that. So it says, husbands, in um, Ephesians 5 and 25, husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church, gave himself up for her. He died for her. He died. He gave her his life. He, Christ gave us his life. He shed blood for us. Even when we were sinning against him. Remember, he said, I loved you first. I loved you yet while you were sinners. So your wife right now might be a sinner. Your wife might be a foolish wife. Your wife might be unrighteous. She might be silly. She might be aggravating. But God said, love her, even in that state. God seems to think that love is the answer. God seems to think that love is the solution to drawing your wife to Christ and to you. He says, he loved the church and gave himself up for it to make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word. So first of all, husbands, you cannot cleanse your wife, make her holy if you don't have the word. If you listen, there are women in homes that know more about the word than their husbands. That should not be. God is calling you as the reverend of your house. You are supposed to be the preacher leading your house spiritually. You should be able to teach. It's, it's nothing like when my husband sits down with the kids and, and, and teach them about the scriptures. It's nothing like when my husband is in church and my son is, you know, on his phone or something. And my husband say, Hey, put that down and pay attention. 
My husband is holding my kids accountable to righteousness. When he says, son, we don't do that in this household. Oh, that's a turn on. Ain't nothing like that. When a husband takes the lead role in this house. You got to have the word in you in order to cleanse your wife. In order to make her holy. You got to get in this word. God will teach you. He will give you the patience. I know sometimes she can be aggravating. I know she can run her mouth sometimes. But if you continue to love her. God says you will make her holy. And to present her. Listen now here he says. Gave himself up for her to make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And to present herself to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. It is the husband's job to remove spots and wrinkles off of his wife and present her blameless. How do you do that? With the word of God. How do you do that? With love, with the love of God. How do you get, do that? By giving yourself to her. She needs to know that you love her. She needs to know that you will protect her with your life. She needs to know that if anybody is against her, her husband got her back. She needs to know that. But she also needs to know that you're not going to buckle when she try to go the opposite way of God. She needs you to stand firm for God. Even when she doesn't. Even when she don't want to. She needs you to pray. She needs you to read your word. She needs you to get up and get the kids ready for church. Even when she don't want to. She needs a leader. And a real leader is a man of God who made God's word the final authority without apology. Husbands, you cannot allow your wife... It's I'm going to give you a story that I, I use the, uh, a, a great synopsis, and I hope this helped you, and I'm going to close with this. When you get married, it's like y'all get into a car. Husband is driving as the head of the household. The wife is in the passenger seat as his helpmate, right? Y'all driving down the road of marriage, right? And then all of a sudden, your wife starts to say, turn that way. Oh, you driving too slow. And then you turn around and you say, uh, excuse me, I'm driving. Shh, I'm driving. So you start driving again. Then next thing you know, she's at it again. Turn that way. Speed up. Slow down. Move all this. Da, da, da. You driving too slow. Turn that music off. Da, 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 da. And then you turn to her again and say, I told you I'm driving. I, shh, shh, be quiet. I'm driving. Right? You get back on the road again. She starts at it again. Look at you. You don't even know how to drive. You don't even know how to do this. Da -da 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 I knew I should have drive. I should have drove. You don't even know how to drive. You're driving too slow. You're getting in. Da -da 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 -da. And then you finally get so frustrated as the man opposed to telling her. No, stop. We not doing that. I'm driving. And I don't want to hear nothing else. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm driving this. But instead, guess what you do? This is what a lot of men are doing, what you cannot do. You turn to her and you say, you want to drive? Yeah, I do it better anyway. You pull over and you let her get in your seat, just like Adam did. Adam let Eve get in his seat. How? When he placed blame. When, Jesus, when, when, when God came into the garden, he said, now watch God. Watch God. God is a God of decency and in order. Eve is the one that took the fruit off the tree. Now, you and I are parents. If we knew that it was this child that ate the tree first and gave it to their sister or their brother, if we knew that, we're going to go to them, right? Because they shouldn't have given it to them. But they still both are going to be punished, right? No, God didn't do that. See, God's not like us. His ways are higher than our ways. Thoughts are much greater than our thoughts. God is a God of decency and order. So he went to the one 
that was in authority, the head of the household. He said, Adam, where are you? Where are you? And see, here's the funny thing about that. When he said, where are you? Adam said, this is, this is how pure they were. They even told on themselves. Adam says, I'm over here hiding because I was naked. <laughs> and the Lord said, who told you you were naked? Adam, who told you that? See, Adam was so pure that he didn't know that he was telling on himself. What? Then Adam said, it was that woman that you gave me. First, he blamed God. He blamed God and the woman. It was your fault. You gave her to me. When you place blame on someone, you automatically put them in authority. So when Adam blamed Eve, he put Eve in the driver's seat. Watch it. Then he went to Eve and he said, girl, what have you done? And she then placed blame to the enemy and gave him authority, which put him in the driver's seat. And now he has authority to kill us. If you notice, the devil, the devil never said nothing. <laughs> he didn't say, well, they listened to me. I, I just offered a suggestion. He never said nothing. Never. It was us. See, See, let me tell you how slick this fool is. Listen, Satan ain't dumb because over a third of the angels came with him. And many of us are still following him. So you got to watch him because he's slick. He knew that once you put blame on him, he was going to have authority over you. He knew that he was going to be able to run the household now. As soon as that happened, your first, one of your sons get killed. Husband, listen to me. This is a serious thing. You cannot let your wife get in that driver's seat. Because then this is what happens. She gets over into the driver's seat. You get out the car. You don't just get in the, uh, in the passenger seat. You get in the back. You so mad. And then she starts to driving like, huh, I got this. I got, I, I can do it myself. Mm -mm -mm. She started driving. She started driving. But then the storms of life that you were created to deal with, you were created to handle, you were created to protect her from, start to come her way. So the, the ditches in the road started to come and the storms start to come and the winds pick up in life. And she starts saying, bae, bae, get back up here, help me. And you in the back like, no, nah. remember? You said you got it, <laughs> remember? You got it. But, and she's still driving and she like, man, I, but I, I, I'm just, you still can come and help me. No, you got it. You got it. Next thing you know, she looks back. Homeboy is not just laying back there. He done bought him a pillow. He done put a, a down comforter back there. He's mounted him a TV screen back there. Flicking the remote controls, chilling back there. And then the wife is up in the front, leading the marriage. And she falls into a ditch that she can't get out of alone. And the marriage falls apart. That's what's going on in households where husbands who refuse to lead, you refuse to, and you keep blaming the woman just like Adam did. Take authority. And say, as for me and my house, we are not doing that. And I don't care if you get mad. I don't care if you walk out. I don't care if you withhold sex from me. I'd rather you do all of that before I defy God. This is a huge problem that's going on in our world today. Wives are trying to lead and get out of their position in the home. Because listen, ladies, our position is very powerful. We have a lot of power in our position. We have a lot of authority in our position. But the moment we try to get into our husband's position, we get out 
of position. We get out of our authority and things just go bad. So the wives out there that are listening and you say to yourself, I have a problem with submission. I have a problem with my mouth. Get rid of the problem. See God, repent, turn away from your wicked ways because anything that's outside of it, if you are defying God's word, if you are doing anything outside of the word of God, it is wicked. So when, when God says to the wife in Ephesians uh, 5 and 22, wives submit yourselves, it's not a suggestion. It's a requirement as a woman of God that you submit yourselves, not like somebody who can be walked over like a dog. No, that's not what submission means. And I'm not going to get into, we're not going to go deep into submission right now, but I'm going to tell you wife that your position as, as wife and your, your ability to submit is where all your power lies. It's where all your authority lies. Girl, you can get whatever you want when you properly submit. When you learn how to submit, there, girl, he'll be jumping up and down for you, doing seesaws. God says to the wife, listen, in Ephesians 33, uh, out, out at the end of the scriptures, it says, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. The last words of this chapter says, and the wife must respect. Another translation says, a wife must reverence her husband. You want to get the best out of your husband? Reverence him, honor him, praise him, respect him. He'll do seesaws for you. There are men that are, are, are dried up, thirsty at the neck. They, 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 uh, their mouths are dry, yearning and hungry for, for their wives to submit to them, for their wives to honor them, for their wives to respect and praise them and thank them for what they've been doing. They are thirsty for it. They hunger for it. They look for it. Every type of compliment they can get, they are, it's never enough. If you pay attention to a two-year-old, right, and you, you're teaching them how to potty train, right? And so you put the, put the little two-year-old boy on the potty, right? And he used the bathroom and you get up and you say, yay, good boy. And what does the boy do? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you give him a sticker and he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guess what? That boy is still in your husband. He's still there. He hasn't left. He's looking for his wife. He's looking for his wife to honor him. He's looking for his wife to believe in him. When the world is on his shoulders, his wife, careful words of reverence, of honor and respect, builds his spiritual muscles up and he can take on the world when he got his wife who is covering him. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, submit. This is not a suggestion. This is a commandment. The reason why families are being torn apart is because these two issues, we refuse to hold down our position as husband and wife. We cannot continue to do this. You want to restore your home? You want to rebuild, re, rebuild your home. You want you yourself. You want your family to be Christ centered. It starts with you, husband. It starts with you, wife. Who's ever watching this? Who's ever getting the information? God is expecting you. We can all cry about, oh, he's not doing this. Oh, she's not doing this. But God said, what are you doing? That's what God did to me when I came to him. Get, you got to fix him, Lord. He said, I got to fix you first. I got to fix your attitude. I got to fix your mouth. I got to fix your bad behavior. I got to fix your nasty character. I got to fix your mouth. And through me, the Lord said, I'll get him. I'm going to use you to get to your husband. I'm going to use you. Husband, God is going to use you to get to your wife. Wife, the Lord can use you to get to your husband. It happened in my life. It happened. 
This is why I'm the world's most satisfied wife. Why? Not because my husband does everything right. Yes, I have an amazing husband. I'm thankful for a husband who is God led, who is, you know, is, is a man of God who takes care of his family. He takes care of this home. He provides for us. He protects us. He raised our children in the way they shall go. I have an amazing husband, but guess what I got? I got an amazing God who never leaves nor forsake me, who's with me always, and who has taught me how to be a wife to this amazing husband. Who's taught me how to support him, but who also has taught me to make his word the final authority, even over my husband. I serve God over my husband. And because I've done that, because I've done that, my husband is pleased with me because everything God tells me to do is pleasing to my husband. God, listen, don't y'all realize that God created the marriage institution? I don't care what this world is trying to teach you. I don't care which way this world is trying to go. I don't care about the lies they telling you. I don't care about the movies you watching. All of that is a lie. God created the marriage institution and he has defined what marriage is and he knows how this thing works. He knows how you can be successful in your marriage. But are you going to listen? Are you going to dig into the scripture? Are you going to seek books and read them? Are you going to go to the meetings and to the events where, where you can get more and more information? That's what I had to do. You got to do it too. I hope this helps somebody out there. I really do. Because this was, uh, this was a really change. So much. It's so much. Listen, look, I'm going to tell you. You see all of that? this? I, I didn't get, you see all of this? This is what God gave me today. Just God gave me today on this subject alone. I didn't even get through a portion of it. That's, that's what God gave me today about men running their households. When you see God, he just give you stuff. He give you witty and creative ideas. So I, I pray that you didn't just hear this. But that you're going to live it. You're going to do it and you're going to share it with somebody else. So share this video with everybody you know. And some people don't even want to, want people to know that they're even watching it. So send it to them privately. In February, for those who have been following me for years now, you know that I do the 28 day Better Wife, Better Life Challenge. It's coming up y'all for 2019. Have y'all seen the flyer on my page? It's called All In. If you are a wife, if you want to be a wife, you need to come to the 28 day better wife, better life challenge. We have a 28 day better wife, better life challenge for wives. And we have a 28 day wife to be challenge for single women. If you want to be the world's most satisfied wife, you got to go all in. And during the 28 day challenge this year, I'm going to teach you and give you the tools on how to be all in your marriage so that you can get all you want out of it. It's free to attend. This is the only time y'all that I go to an event where there is no charge. The only charge for it is the materials. If you we're going to be printing the book there, but to attend is free. You, if you want, you can buy the materials or you don't, but the, the challenge, it costs to print that it costs to do that. That's my material. That's my work. You're going to have to pay for that. But to attend, if you can't afford it, no problem. You can. Somebody might even bless you. I, I remember one 28-day Better Wife, Better Life Challenge. Um, somebody, a couple people blessed people in the room that could not afford um, to, to get the download at, at the time. You can download it or you can um, buy the book. So we're going to have the printed book this year. I want you to be there. Listen, for those who are in other countries, those who are in other states, we are going to go live but I cannot promise you that the entire event will be live. I cannot promise that. But I'm going to try to give you as much as possible live. We're going to be recording it professionally so that we can offer it to you later. It's going to start January 
28th. It is five Mondays from 7 to 8.30 in the evening. You got to be there. It's going, listen, I'm believing God is about to transform some marriages, is about to restore some single women who are confused about this life as wife and want to be married. I'm believing God, there's going to be some transformation that takes place in that house. You are going to walk away equipped, understanding this life as wife, knowing exactly what to do, how to handle whatever situ situation that comes your way. Because I'm going to teach you how to go all the way in. Now, I need you to know, I'm not a pacifier. I'm not here to baby. I'm not that type of girl. I'm not that type of speaker. There's other speakers. Listen, and I'm not trying to down anyone. People just like, some people like their message given to them softly. I'm not that girl. I'm an in-your-face girl. I'm the truth. I'm going to tell it like it is. I, that's just how I am. If you can't take it that way, don't waste your time. Don't come. But if you want the truth, you want the real facts, you want to know how to walk this life out as a wife, you want to be at the 28-Day Better Wife Bell Life Challenge. If you're watching this and you've, you've been at the 28-Day Challenge, I want you to tell people in the comments how it was for you because I'm telling you some marriages have been restored. But I've had people come to the challenge and did not listen and refuse. I've had, I had a wife who said, I don't want to do it. I, I'm not doing it. But she kept coming. I, I don't understand. And her marriage fell apart. But when you say I can't and I won't, there's nothing I or God can do. But we had plenty of wives who got great testimonies that came out of it. I had one woman who said, when, before the challenge started, she said, you know, I registered and I want to uh, cancel my registration. And I said, well, why? She said, because I'm calling the lawyers tomorrow. I'm done. I'm done with this marriage. I said, please don't. Please don't. I said, she said, no, I'm done. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't do this no more. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm tired of this man. I'm at my end. I said, give God 28 days. If you could just give God 28 days. If, if, if nothing happens in the 28 days, call the lawyers and get the divorce. Okay. And she looked at me and with great hesitation, she was like, hmm. okay, 28 days. And that's it. I am pleased to tell you that this woman is still married today. Her marriage is in a greater place than it ever has been. She said it was the best 28 days of her life. She told her husband, she came to a date night that I had done and she looked at her husband, her husband that never met me. She said, babe, this is her. And he said, who? She said, he said, this is the reason why my marriage was saved. And I'm saying to you, it wasn't because of me. It was because of God. It was because of God's word that he put in me to share with other women. I'm nothing without him. You are nothing without him. But when you get this word, mm, people going to be like, it was because of her. And you'll be able to say, to God be the glory. Because we know that God's word works when we work it. So if you want to go all the way in as a wife, if you want to go all the way in as a future wife, the 28 Day Better Wife Better Life Challenges for you is starting January 28th at Brightmore Christian Church out in Novi. That's right. Brightmore is allowing the 28 Day Better Wife Better Life Challenge to be hosted right at the church. Plenty of parking, beautiful location. Church remodel is an amazing place. That's my church home. I am so thankful that Brightmore is allowing me to uh, bring the 28 Day Better Wife Feel Life Challenge. It allows us so much flexibility. So I hope that you join us. If you cannot be here in the state of Detroit, Michigan, which that is right outside of Detroit, is Novi. And you can't be here, join us live. I thank you all for joining me. I appreciate you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your comments. I love you all. I just want you to remember that God's word works. He never fails. He never leaves nor forsake us. He is with us always. And if he's been there for you, say, he's been there for me. He's been there for me. Say it, y'all. He's been there for me. Every day, all day, even when things are bad, they're good because I know that God is with me. He's never leaving me nor forsaken me. I don't fear in submitting to my husband. You know why? Because I know that God told me to do it. And if God told me to do it, 
it must be the thing that my husband needs and it must be the thing that causes marriage to increase. I thank y'all again for joining me. I'm your girl, Mrs. Toy Banks, the world's most satisfied wife in For Better Wife, Better Life, helping you balance it all. God bless.